Hey guys, in this video I will show you 15 devices that I used or have used in the past to copy games, drivers, benchmarks and whatnot onto retro gaming PCs. Let's start with devices that doesn't involve opening up the machine and removing the storage device. The good old floppy drive is first, 3.5 inch, 1.4 megabyte of capacity, really useful because they can boot. So for DOS and Windows 98, these are fantastic. You can partition your drive, format your drive, uh, make it bootable and uh, yeah, start your project. In terms of reliability, they can be a little bit flaky. You might have to reformat disks over time because they lose the information. So just keep that in mind. On the modern computer, you want to have one of these. This is a USB floppy drive, takes the same floppy disks, lets you copy files onto them, maybe a small driver or even some games. And then you can insert it into your retro PC that has a floppy drive installed. Because of the reliability issues I saw with floppy disks, I switched to the GoTech floppy emulators. And there are two types. Let's start with the internal version first. So this is basically a replacement to the three and a half inch floppy drives. Connect to the floppy motherboard header. You insert a USB thumb drive. It's got like a hundred or a thousand uh, slots. It depends on how you configure it. And then you can use software on your modern computer to access those floppy images. Now there is another type of the GoTech floppy emulator, this version here. The difference is this is external. So this is the floppy, the GoTech floppy version of the USB floppy drive. And yeah, it's got a USB port at the back. So this makes it really easy to access the images on the USB thumb drive. Uh, also bootable, a lot of machines can support uh, booting from a USB floppy drive. Also, it's compatible with Windows XP for loading the AHCI floppy driver for your SATA controller. The optical disk drive is next, not just for DOS and Windows 98, also for Windows XP. These are very useful. Installing Windows XP off an optical drive is very straightforward. If your machine can't boot from the CD-ROM drive, you can use the Plop Boot Manager as a workaround. And not just for installing the operating system, also games. A lot of games come on disks and might have various copy protections. So the good old floppy drive is definitely a must have to uh, exchange files between old and new. You also need media and this is a yeah a call to action to rush out and buy some of these because at least in my town they're really hard to find. Um, the supermarkets don't stock them anymore, post office, um, Retrovision, Harvey Norman, I tried them all, they don't stock these anymore. So I have to order them online. And if you want to play around with making like a custom boot disk or something, buy a few CDRWs. These are rewritable. It just means you can uh, have several goes uh, in case you're not sure if the disk will work. Also very handy is the USB optical drive. A lot of modern cases don't have drive base anymore. So this can come in handy. Also, you can boot from many computers. Uh, they support booting from a USB optical drive and you can install Windows XP from a USB optical drive. So they are very handy and they are compatible with uh, copyright protections of many games. So definitely uh, a handy device to have in your toolkit. Especially for Windows XP, Windows Vista and Windows 7 projects, I use the USB hard drive a lot. It has all the drivers on there, for example, the Snappy Driver Installer Origin, which probes all the hardware in your computer and then installs the drivers. And <clears throat> usually in my workflow, I create a project folder for whatever project I'm working on and I put the drivers and whatnot in that folder. But I have all the other benchmarks, the generic drivers, uh, games and so on also on here. Games, I like using uh, GOG installers because I don't need to go online. I don't need CD keys. There's no DRM. You just run the installer and off you go. You want to have a few USB thumb drives together with Rufus and other projects like Easy to Boot or Win Setup from USB. They can make your life really easy. Put ISO images on here boot your machine and you can install your operating system. Very, very handy. You can't have enough USB thumb drives. 
And now let's talk about networking. I've done a few videos on connecting older computers to your home LAN and also to communicate to a NAS, a network attached storage. And there are many uh, network adapters out there. I will show you a few that I recommend. This is one from Netgear PCI interface. These work in DOS. For DOS, you need something called a packet driver. Um, DOS networking is quite basic. I recommend you switch it up, maybe Windows 3.11, but much better is Windows 98. You have some decent networking support. Um, and in terms of protocol, I recommend you go with FTP. That means your uh, home network, you don't have to lower the security settings to be compatible. FTP works beautifully. And on the NAS, you can also enable FTP and then use a fairly decent client under Windows 98 to copy all your stuff through the network. 3Com network adapters deserve definitely a mention. They are very popular. That means prices will be a little bit on the high side, unfortunately. This one is for ISA, so perfect for older machines, even going down to a 386. There are two reasons these are popular. The first one is they do a lot of the networking, the computational calculations on the chip. So they're taking work, workload away from the processor, making your machine feel more responsive. And the second advantage is operating support. Most operating systems have these drivers already integrated, so you don't need to slip, uh, slipstream drivers onto your ISO or whatnot, or uh, somehow load the network driver. Um, the operating system will find them automatically and off you go. I also have a few of these lying around. These are basic USB Wi-Fi adapters. I like using Wi-Fi at the moment. I don't have too many Ethernet cables uh, connected to my home network. This one uh, supports the 802.11ac standard. Under Windows 10, it's plug and play. All the drivers are already integrated. Under Windows XP, you need to load the drivers manually, but as long as you have Service Pack 3, you can still easily connect to your home network. With security, especially with Windows XP, um, I configure the IP addressing manually and make sure there's no default gateway configured. If that doesn't make sense what I'm talking about, do a bit of uh, reading up on DHCP and manual IP addressing and that will uh, set you on your path. So definitely very handy to have some of these lying around. And now let's talk about a few gadgets that are very handy if you are able to remove your storage device from your retro PC. For example, SD card, compact flash card, a SATA SSD. You can hide it in a drive tray or just open the machine uh, and pull it out. So the first one is an adapter from Ugreen. Now in terms of branding, there are many adapters. There are two brands that I can recommend, Ugreen and uh, Orico. Both uh, companies, I have bought products from them in the past. I still use them on a daily basis. I've also done a few review videos from them and their products have been very solid. So this is a SATA to USB 3 adapter. So if you're using a SATA hard drive or a SATA SSD, plug it in here, connect this to your modern computer, and then you can copy Windows installation files, drivers, games, and everything else. This is the same thing, but it doesn't support just SATA. This one also supports IDE, and they're getting a little bit harder to find. And I guess in a few years, you might not be able to buy them new anymore, and you will have to look at the second-hand market. So this supports the uh, three and a half inch hard drives. It's got a Molex power here, so you plug your drive in there, but also the 44 pin two and a half inch laptop drives. So very handy. Also supports USB 3 and this is permanently installed on my main desktop because that's how I like to copy information onto my retro PC. It is the fastest way. I shut down the retro PC, pull out the SSD, plug it in here, copy everything across and it's just way faster than all the other previous methods. If you're working with SD cards, you want a SD card reader. This one is USB 3, so make sure it has USB 3 support. It will do data transfers up to like 80 or 90 megabytes per second. That is beautiful. Uh, and old games, they're not too large, so you can copy entire gaming libraries uh, in a short time. Now this one is only for SD cards. If you are using compact flash cards, you need to look 
for one that also has a uh, compact flash like this one. This one I've bought many years from Woolworths. Now the compact flash adapters, you have to be really gentle with inserting them because there are lots of small pins that can easily be bent. So just be a little bit careful. And there you go. So we had a look at 15 devices that are used or have used in the past to copy information between your retro PC and the modern world. I will put affiliate links down below in the video description if you want to look at buying some of these. As always, it supports the channel and it doesn't cost you anything extra. And also, if you have any questions or feedback or comments, leave them down below. If you're using another method, I would like to hear uh, from you. I'm always eager to learn about new methods of copying uh, information onto retro PCs, but this should give you a wide range of gadgets and gizmos that are suitable. And that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.